It was unnerving. It was weird. Um, and I got to tell you, it profoundly changed my attitudes about a lot of things. It was both one of the most disturbing experiences of my life, yet at the same time, one of the most fulfilling. Hey everybody, it's Godier with WTF here on TalkSTL.com. What you're looking at right now is Westboro Baptist Church, and that's obviously a focal point of why we came to Topeka. But more importantly, we came here to support the work of the Equality House and its parent organization, PlanningPeace.org. We have a lot planned for you guys over the next 24, 48 hours while we're doing our shows here. We're going to talk with people who were part of the church at one time. We're going to talk with people who've been abused by the church. We're going to talk with the founders of Equality House and Planning Peace, and they have a really interesting and compelling story about how they got to this place. We're also going to talk with a guy by the name of Steve Drain. Now, Steve is a guy that came here in the 80s to actually film a documentary about just how crazy Westboro Baptist Church actually was, and they ended up converting him. If you feel compelled toward that lust and you can't help yourself, the only hope you have of heaven is to take a piece of rusty Kansas barbed wire and lo lop your junk off. If that's going to, what's well, going to take, and that's Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off and cast it from you. Better into, enter into life maimed than to have both hands go to hell. And if your right eye offend you, pluck it out. That's some serious preaching. That isn't what would Jesus do, Veggie Tales bullshit. Mm -hmm. He's saying, pluck your eye out if you can't stop looking at things you and coveting things that you shouldn't have, mm -hmm. and throw it away from you. It's better to enter into life <clears throat> blind than to have both eyes and go to hell. So by that, the extension of that logic, those guys need to take some rusty barbed wire and cut that little junk right off, and praise God and and and. Get on your knees and be ashamed for what you did instead of keep trying to pump sunshine up, up to everybody's ass and saying that it's an innocent alternate lifestyle. It's an innocent alternate lifestyle like I'm Aretha Franklin. Read the Bible. Next question. Um, <clears throat> the future of the church, as you guys see it. Where, is, I mean, where do you see it going? Do you, do, you, do you see more people moving your direction or do you see people moving away from you? And, and if so, why do, you, why do you think those things are, are happening? Well, first of all, we're not here to win friends and influence people, and God doesn't God doesn't govern by plebiscite. You know what that means? Majority rule. Mm -hmm. you, got, you look at these people in this church, this God blessed little church, uh, preaching the Bible, and billions, teeming billions, masses of people in opposition to the Word of God. It's almost statistically irrelevant or insignificant or statistically invisible that there is, there is any faith, faith on the earth. When the flood came, 
and everybody died. Every little baby, every old man, everybody died. The Lord saved eight people. And if you believe somebody like Professor Ray Winkle, who wrote a book called The Flood, he was a geologist and a Christian about the first third of the 20th century. He said that because of lifespans, because of no birth control, because of the idea that you wanted your children as a labor force, at the time of the flood there was more like 12 to 16 billion people on the earth, not the paltry 7 billion that we have today with cancer and Chernobyl and condoms and all that. So the idea is out of 12 or 16 billion, whether you believe that number or not, you're talking teeming billions of people and eight people in the whole world saved. And one of those was an absolute POS named Ham. So what I got to say is I think that there might be too many people at the Westboro Baptist Church by those numbers. the militant fag agenda all run by his majesty the devil so you work for satan i just want to let you know that now as far as this, the you silly, mean i work for satan absolutely you do all okay. four of you do i like you but i'm sorry you just your boss is kind of a jack weasel <laughs>